Streaming and gaming is a really hard task to run, even on just one PC. Nowadays, a lot of streamers are switching to a dual PC, kind of like myself. I honestly had so much anxiety about switching over to a dual PC setup just because I didn't really have a great guide. Uh, although, shout out to my friends Kilo, Jealous, and he, he TV for pushing me to do a dual PC setup. I honestly wish there was just a simple guide to follow. So, I'm making one. Here it is. I really wanted to make this guide to break it down between what kind of hardware do you need to be able to do this, but also to what kind of software setting you're gonna have to change in your computers to make this work properly. I've been doing this for a few weeks now, and honestly, I can say that I absolutely love streaming with a dual PC setup. Being able to have one PC focusing on just the streaming capability of it, and then have another one just focus on the gaming capability, has been a true game changer for me, and I highly recommend it. Now, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. I just found out that this is the best way for me to operate, and honestly, like I said, over the past few weeks, I haven't had any problems so far. So if you feel like there's something I could be doing differently, then feel free to let me know in the comment section below. But this is what I found to work best for me. I know I said I'll be talking about a lot of hardware too. I'm gonna try and leave uh, links down below. Some of them will be affiliate links, so in case you wanna go ahead and support the channel. Uh, also, if you wanna support the channel, hit that thumbs up on this, and also uh, hit that subscribe button in case you wanna see more content like this. And then lastly, I know this is gonna be a long video. There will be timestamps for each individual area that you can go into. That way you can go ahead and take a look at it or jump back to a part in case you forgot something I had said. Hopefully it's gonna be easy for you to navigate. If I miss anything, I am totally apologize, but feel free to leave comments in the comment section below. I'll try and keep up with it the best that I can. And you can also come over on Twitch and talk to me live Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday night, 8 p.m. EST. All right, so to start off, I just wanna kind of dive into this in case someone's doing some research for this. Why do a dual PC setup? Well, personally, I was running an AMD Ryzen 5 and I was also running a 3070 Ti, I believe, in my previous build. And even just gaming on like Apex and stuff like that, it felt like it wasn't running as smooth as it possibly could. I also felt like I had a little like glitches here and there with it. It was just a really frustrating experience. Having a machine that is actually a pretty powerful machine and still not be able to run a game completely well was really frustrating. If you think about it nowadays, most games are either really power hungry or they're just not even completely optimized for your settings. Games like Escape from Tarkov and Apex are fantastic games, but they're not 100% optimized. I'm pretty sure EFT still has like a RAM memory leak or something like that still in it to this day. So so luckily I was in a position where I was able to actually have a second PC to where I could actually just now have a computer focused on just streaming and streaming alone and then also doing gaming as well. Now before I get too far into this, I will say the piece I'm using for streaming is kind of crazy like spec wise. You don't need something that nuts. I would suggest you guys doing some research on your own to figure out what a really good like budget friendly stream PC is because you don't need something that's crazy overkill to spend thousands of dollars on. Again, unless you have it, then go for it, but you don't really need to. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into the list of of things that I used for this dual PC setup. So here's just a quick rundown of the essential pieces that I needed to get in addition to the dual PCs that I had, so that way I can go ahead and do this setup. So with this guide, we're gonna be using a GoXLR 3.5 auxiliary cable, the Elgato 4K60 Pro internal version, second mouse and keyboard, doesn't have to be crazy, anything will do, wireless is preferred, an additional ethernet cable, and then also an additional HDMI cable as well. I'll go ahead and explain what each one of these pieces will do, but this is just some things that I found that I needed before jumping into this. Now keep in mind, although I did mention a GoXLR and it does make this process very, very easy, you can still do a lot of this with audio routing through stuff like voice meter and things of that nature. I'll be completely honest, I don't know how to do it, but if you look up some guides and stuff like that, you can probably figure out what you would need to be able to digitally send your signal the same way I'm doing it with the GoXLR. Now that we have a quick list of just small uh, hardware pieces we're gonna need in addition to what we have, let's go and dive into how that's actually configured. So going forward in this tutorial, I'm gonna be talking about the stream PC and a gaming PC. So please make sure that you pay attention to which one I'm talking about when I'm talking about what piece goes where and how to configure certain things. So let's go ahead and talk about the stream PC and what hardware needs to go into that one first. So for your stream PC, for the hardware you're gonna to wanna to connect to it, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that anything video related is gonna be connected to it as far as like video cameras or cam links or even like USB webcams, stuff like that. In addition to that, you're also gonna make sure that you wanna have your stream deck that controls your scene. So if you're doing scene switching or filters or things of that nature, make sure you have that connected as well. Basic mouse and keyboard. Again, when I literally tell you, you're just gonna be able to turn on your computer, type in your password and then put them aside. That's literally what you're gonna do. So don't make it crazy expensive. 4K60 Pro, like I said, I got the internal version. You can use the USB, but I prefer to go internal with this one. And then lastly is gonna be the 3.5 auxiliary cord that's gonna be going into the line in. I'm gonna explain that a little bit more in detail later on, but you will need the auxiliary cord in the line in on your stream PC. Now you want all of those plugged into your stream PC because that is gonna be where your main version of OBS lives and where it works. So everything with all your uh, visuals and things of that are gonna be on your stream PC. 
Everything else, like your audio and things of that nature will be on your gaming PC. Again, I'll explain a little bit more deep, but anything visual related gonna be on the stream PC more than likely. All right, so secondarily, what do you wanna have plugged into your gaming PC? You're gonna wanna make sure that you have your primary gaming mouse and keyboard, so make sure it's a nice one because this is what I use for all of your typing and gaming and stuff like that. And then also too, you wanna make sure that your Go XLR plugged into this. So you wanna plug it in via USB and also wall power as well. The reason why you want the Go XLR attached to your gaming PC is because all the audio for everything, gaming, chat, alerts, Everything will be going through your Go XLR and it's gonna be rerouting it back into your stream PC. Again, I'll explain how the chain works later on in the video and give you a demonstration how I set it up, but that is why you want the Go XLR app and everything onto your gaming PC. Now, optional things you might wanna actually add into your gaming PC is either gonna be a Stream Deck pedal or additional Stream Deck, so that way if you wanna control like your desktop or your game scene, whichever one you want. Also, you wanna be able to control your actual Discord, so in case you don't have a hotkey set for it and you want a foot pedal or something like that, Make sure that's plugged in your gaming PC as well. And then lastly, you might want a capture card for a console. Everything audio and gaming wise is gonna go through your gaming PC and it's just gonna reroute into your stream PC. Now that we got the hardware down and where it goes, let's just go over again where everything's gonna plug into to make sure we have it set up properly. Again, I'm gonna try to make this as simple as possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. So currently I have a three monitor setup. I have one in the portrait mode and then two in landscape. I have my stream PC hooked up to my portrait mode monitor. And then I have my gaming PC hooked up to my two landscape monitor and I have an additional HDMI cable going from my gaming PC graphics card into my stream PC's 4K60 Pro. Now, do not use pass-through. The way that I'm doing this is that I'm gonna be using OBS to kind of create a hack to where I can create a preview of my OBS so that way I can send it to my streaming PC. The reason why I'm not doing it with a pass-through is because pass-through can technically limit your amount of FPS and your frame rate that you can do because HDMI has certain versions of HDMI like 2.1 and so on and so forth and they will limit you based on what version it is to 144 hertz, 240 hertz. I found out that my monitor that I bought last year actually went up to 120 hertz via HDMI because it was HDMI one something, 1.8. So keep that in mind. That's the reason why I'm doing this OBS hack instead. So, but totally up to you. If you wanna figure out the other way, then be my guest. Now for the Go XLR, you wanna make sure this plugged into your gaming PC as that's where all the audio is gonna be coming from. And then you actually wanna take the auxiliary cable that we have and go from the line out on the back of the GoXLR and you wanna route that to the line in on the streaming PC. That is how you're gonna actually transfer over all your audio from your gaming PC to your streaming PC. Doing it this way also allows to make sure that you hear everything. So all your alerts, all your audio and all that, and you can easily route it to the GoXLR table. And again, that way you have to worry about your stream PC doing any kind of audio at all. Another little side note with the 3.5, if you get any weird humming or hissing or electronical interference as far as the noise goes, running from the GoXLR to the stream PC, you might need what's called a ground loop isolator, which actually helps get rid of some of that noise and that static. I personally ended up using an AudioQuest cable, which is a higher end 3.5 cable so you can also try and use something like that which hopefully won't carry over any of that noise I personally haven't noticed anything and again I've been streaming for a few weeks with this setup and it's worked perfectly fine now that we have all the cables plugged into where they need to be let's go and set up software wise how it actually is supposed to be set up in the systems I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set up the two versions of OBS to make sure they work with each other properly and how everything should be routed as far as audio goes. So let's head over to the two PC setup and check it out. All right, what's going on everyone? So currently right now we are looking at the stream PC setup. So the OBS you see on display right now is actually gonna be the stream PC. Also, I cannot see what I'm doing because I have the display disabled so I don't have that like infinity effect or whatever. So I don't like bug you guys too much. But anyways, Let's go over this really quick. So this OBS is gonna be the OBS that you actually use and treat like your regular OBS. So I do have my entire like Twitch login on this and stuff like that. I do have all my alerts, all my nested scenes, um, my raw scenes and stuff like that. So it's all in there. Again, keep in mind though, the only audio thing that you can see right now is the mic aux. So I'm gonna go over that in just a minute. Another easy way to look at this is that treat this as if you were, this is the OBS you'd be running on a single PC setup. So you would treat this OBS that same way, again, just with a couple of audio tricks because you're not gonna be capturing any of the audio coming out right now. The mic aux you see right there that is currently being moved is actually gonna be the GoXLR line out coming into this PC. So first, going over the settings, again, I just wanna quickly go over this. I don't wanna go too in depth with it, but settings, you would just have this logged into your Twitch account like you normally would. Um, so just log in there like you would or attach your stream key for whatever software you use. I'm gonna go over my output resolution and my video resolution. Now, keep in mind, I will give you a note. 
My stream PC is way overkill. I think I have like a 3070 in this thing plus a Ryzen 5. So it's absolutely overkill for what it needs to do. So that's why I'm using NVENC new. If you're looking to build a PC for this, you do not have to get the kind of specs like that. Again, I would just recommend going out and doing some research on what a good streaming PC looks like that isn't gonna break the bank because you do not need to spend thousands of dollars on your stream PC. I mean, unless you want to, or if you get the parts for it, then by all means, just full send it, but you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get this set up. So my output setting is gonna be this right here. So this is basically the max quality I can set it to right now, and I am using NVENC new. And then this is gonna be the video setting that I'm currently using as well, which again, this is pretty much the highest quality I could find. I might fine tune this and do a full video on this later on but these are my settings. Copy it if you have a full-fledged PC. If not, you have to look up basically a CPU encoding setup. All right, now that we have those settings just out of the way really quick, uh, again, let's look at this audio bar down here. This is gonna be the mic aux. Now, if you, real, if you look at it, go to the properties. This is set up as line in definition. So again, this is gonna be the line in that you ran from the GoXLR out. This is gonna be fed from the GoXLR. This is coming from the line out on the GoXLR into the line in on your stream PC. So this captures everything, your OBS alerts, your stream bot alerts. Um, if you have any other bots that do alerts, any sound clips that play from your PC, all that's gonna play on your gaming PC, not in your stream PC. I just wanna preface that again, all your audio should be coming through your game PC. Reason why is that if you have any audio coming through your stream PC, I promise you, you're not gonna hear it and your stream, it might also introduce an echo and stuff like that. I've been running it the way that I've been saying with where all my audio is going through my gaming PC and I've had no problems with audio, audio echoing or doubling or anything like that. Now, also the other thing is that I do run my Stream Deck software on here. So my main Stream Deck that controls my OBS, because again, any visuals, any scenes and things like that are still controlled on this PC, which is a Stream PC. So my Stream Deck XL is actually hooked up to this PC. The only thing I have hooked up to my gaming PC is my pedal, which controls basically just Discord. All right, so for alerts, now again, Visually, you want your alerts to pop up on this OBS. So if you do nested scenes or however you do it, make sure that you add your alerts, which I'm gonna do right now. But now notice on the right-hand side, I actually have this muted in my audio mixer. So that way this is not playing any audio whatsoever, because again, all that audio is gonna come through on my gaming PC. I'm gonna show you how to set that up, so don't worry, but make sure that that is muted. Otherwise you will get double sound alerts or it's gonna be just really weird. So make sure it's muted. And then honestly, that's pretty much it from the stream PC. Again. Literally, I only use this to start up OBS and then start streaming, and then everything else is done on my gaming computer. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how my gaming computer is currently set up right now. Also for the editor, I'm sorry, but <laughs> double vision. Oh my God, it's infinity. All right. So now we are technically on the gaming PC as it is. So first things first, I'm going to go over with you right now is going to be the GoXLR and how I have it routed and set up. Again, this routing table can also be achieved with other things like voice meter and stuff like that. So I'm sure that you can route it the same way. Just keep in mind, you might have to look up a different guide on how to use it with how to do a dual PC setup with voice meter instead of this. So with the Go XLR, this is how I have everything set up. So for the line out, this is going to be everything that's going to your actual stream PC. So I literally have everything just checked off, whether it's the samples, systems, line in, that kind of stuff. So everything in here is just checked off and it is going to OBS. So any of my alerts, any discord sounds that I have going on, game sounds, even streamer bot, like I have streamer bot and I use that for audio uh, cues on this PC. Any of that stuff will be captured and will be put over to your stream PC. In essence, it'll be captured in your stream. And again, the big thing is make sure that you have your auxiliary cable going from the line out on the GoXLR to the line into your stream PC. All right, so now we have our audio set up. Let's go and take a look at how OBS is set up. So again, with this, this is gonna be basically called the OBS hack or essentially an OBS hack. Now to quickly talk about how you actually capture and use OBS with, that, with the OBS hack, this is kind of how you do it. If you notice, I have three monitors that are showing up right here. However, I only actually have two physical monitors. So again, we have this virtual monitor that is sitting technically above my right-hand side monitor and above it. Now, the reason why I have it set up that way is so that way I don't lose my mouse cursor on it because when you have it plugged up like this and have it operating this way, it will act as a monitor, but you just can't see it because technically it's a capture card that's in your stream PC. It's kind of confusing and it's weird. Just put it in orientation so that we don't lose your mouse cursor. Otherwise, you're gonna be searching for it for hours and trying to figure out where it went. And also too, while we're in here, just to look at the sound, this is how the sound setting is set up. Just like normally on a regular single PC setup, you'd have your system set up for your GoXLR and then your chat mic for your input. That is how you would have that set up as well. So now that we verified that we do have our virtual monitor and it is showing, what you'd wanna do is you'd want to go ahead and first make a scene. This is just a one scene deal that you need. You don't need anything extravagant. 
Now you can do a monitor capture, which I'm technically doing right now on my actual version of OBS. This is just basically a secondary one. You can actually do a monitor capture. Just keep in mind if you do monitor capture, you might be exposing personal information or things that pop up on the screen. So just be careful because if you go to any sussy websites, people might see, or if you're talking to someone or DMing or even if you bring up something that has your full name listed on it, it's gonna show. But I think it is important to have a desktop set up so that way if you do wanna browse the web and do wanna do it with your community or your stream, you can do that. I personally just do a folder right here that are full of the games that I have. So my HD60 Pro, which is gonna be for my consoles, Escape from Tarkov, Apex, Kovacs. I have it all just set up in here individually and I just have it in one folder so it keeps it neat and clean. Now, if you notice, I actually have Streamlab alerts right here and I also have sound bit alerts as well. So these we can actually go ahead and take because again, we just want the sound from it. We don't really care about the visual cue because this isn't the OBS for all that visual stuff for overlays. This is just for game capture and for your desktop. You can literally take that and drag it off to the side or just make sure that it's at the very bottom of your sources. So that way it doesn't actually get captured on your display. Quick note, make sure that your settings are set up. I actually messed this up when I first did it, but make sure that your videos is actually set up properly because if it's spitting out a 60 frames per second image, it might mess up, but just make sure you have this set to regular 1080p. Quick note, again, if you want to downscale your stream to 720p or you know 936 by whatever that crazy number is, you're gonna wanna do that on your stream PC. Make sure this is set to just 1080p, standard capture like that, 60 frames a second, have it output to your capture card or to your virtual monitor. Okay, so now we're ready to set up the virtual monitor. So now all you have to do is just right click, Scroll down to full projector projector preview and then go to Elgato 1080p HDR. When you enable this or when you click this, it is then going to take a copy of your preview and send it to your third monitor, which is going to be captured by your stream PC. So that is going to be what's actually on your stream PC and what it's showing. And that's how I'm currently capturing this now. Now, some little weird quirk I do want to mention. I do have to do this every single time I actually turn on my stream PC and my gaming PC. I basically have to do a full screen projection. So just don't forget to do that. All right, so something to note when you want to do a desktop capture also too, another weird thing is that this will oftentimes change to a different monitor. So just make sure you clicked on the correct monitor because again, you might expose some saucy DMs you don't want to. And you might get banned on Twitch or reveal who your secret lover is or what your next brand deal is. You don't want to do that. So just make sure you double check that to make sure you're not capturing the wrong thing. So now we have our stream PC capturing anything that's brought over from our gaming PC. Our gaming PC is sending all audio signal to the actual stream PC. So whether it's Discord or anything like that, everything is being sent through there. And again, you wanna make sure that you have your alerts sound-wise set up on your gaming PC. So that way you hear those audio cues and your stream hears those audio cues. And that's why you wanna have it set up that way. I personally had to actually set up a secondary streamer bot because this streamer bot that I have on this computer actually does all of my audio cues. As for anything that has to do with like changing filters or changing like uh, scenes and stuff like that, that streamer bot is actually set up on my stream PC because it handles that side of it. Really confusing. If you don't know what streamer bot is, I suggest you looking into it. It's a really powerful tool, um, but it's probably an additional piece to confuse you with. So just ignore it if you don't know what it is. All right, so that's pretty much all set up. So if you've followed this guide properly, you should have everything set up to where it's properly displaying to your actual stream PC. All your audio should be good. One thing to note too, if you do have some weird audio sounds or if the sound coming from your gaming PC is a little weird, you might need something called a ground loop isolator that actually helps get rid of some of that static noise, electro, uh, electronic noise introduced from sending it from one device to another. So you might need that if it is an issue. I'm personally using an AudioQuest cable, which is a high quality cable with uh, different materials and stuff that's made out of to carry a high quality signal. I haven't had any, any issues with that. So you also could try and look into just investing into a higher quality auxiliary cable. That's pretty much it. Let's head back to the closeout section so we can go ahead and get you off and uh, streaming with the dual PC setup. So that essentially is how you do a dual PC setup. With those settings and with everything plugged in the way that it is, you should have no problem being able to stream it. Again, I do wanna just make a mention that I am using a fully fledged gaming PC as my stream PC, just because of the position I'm in. I know that not everyone is as fortunate as I am to be able to do that or might have the parts laying around or the accessibility to a graphics card to be able to do it. But that's how I have it set up. I might actually go in ahead and dive deeper into like a best settings and stuff like that for a dual PC setup at this point, now that I have that. But I personally would just recommend doing some research. So based on what specs you have and stuff like that to find what works best for you. As I said before, I'm still pretty new to this and I kind of just went off the advice of my friends. So if you guys see anything that I did that I could maybe correct or fix, or I could be doing better as far as the setup goes and stuff like that, or if you do it differently, then please let me know and just put the information in the comments 
comment section below. I'd love to be able to just get a bunch of information on this video on how to do dual PC setups. So feel free to go ahead and just notate stuff down there below. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like this kind of content, or if you like my personality, then feel free to go ahead and hit that sub button. I really appreciate it. Also too, if you wanna to come talk to me live, I am live on Twitch, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday nights at 8 p.m. EST. Usually playing Apex, but also play a bunch of other games as well too. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I appreciate it and have an awesome stream. I'll see you later.